What the heck is Docker Compose? And how does it make the life of an engineer like you easier? This tutorial will answer that and more as simply as possible. Here's the agenda for this video. We will answer what is Docker Compose, why it exists and how it differs from the Docker Run command, how to use Docker Compose, which will be a hands-on demo, and then we will look at when to use Docker Compose. If you are absolutely new to Docker, check out the Docker Made Easy series. If you want to learn more about Docker networking, check out Networking in Docker series. Alright, so what is Docker Compose? Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container applications. With Compose, you use a YAML file to configure your application services or containers. Then, with a single command, you can build, start, or delete your application services. Running multiple containers is a very common scenario. Take for example a WordPress application. It consists of a WordPress service that talks to a MySQL database. We could run both containers using two docker run commands with a bunch of CLI arguments. The DB container might be started like this. Additionally, we might need to isolate these containers from the host or other containerized applications. We could create or remove networks with docker network commands and modify docker run to take the network as an argument. Typing out these verbose commands might be fine once or twice, but as the number of containers and configurations grow, they become increasingly harder to manage. With Compose, we simply define the application's configuration on a YAML file like this. This particular file defines two services db and wordpress it also specifies the configuration options for each like the image environment variables publish ports volumes etc if you don't understand all these options yet that's fine after creating this file we execute docker compose up and docker builds and runs our entire application in a new isolated environment Similarly, we can use the docker compose down command to tear everything down. Easy, right? This is how compose simplifies running multi-container applications on a single host. Being able to declare and reuse the configuration as a file makes the life of an engineer much easier. It also allows us to version control, run tests, and review our configuration just like the application source code. Besides the benefits mentioned, Compose provides the following key features. Have multiple isolated environments on a single host. Preserve volume data when containers are created. Only recreate containers that have changed. And share variables or configurations between environments. That's all good to know, but let us learn how to use Docker Compose. The source code for this demo can be found on this repository, link in description below. Alright, the first step is to install Docker and Docker Compose. Both of them can be installed with Docker Desktop, which includes a few other components as well. Alternatively, we could install Docker Engine and Docker Compose separately. Step 2 is to create a sample web application. Here is the code for the repository we just saw. We have a simple Python Flask application in 10 lines of code. First, we are importing our 
dependencies. We initialize Flask in Redis and then we define a single HTTP route. This route returns a string hello world. I have been seeing dash times. But the value of dash is received from a key in Redis, which is incremented every time this request is being called. So the first time this should return, I have been seen one time, then two, then three, and so on. Next, we need to define the requirements for our Python application. So we are simply using Flask and Redis, and we define that on requirements.txt. Then we define a Docker file which is used for building the Docker image. We are starting from the Python 3.7 Alpine image. We are setting the slash code directory inside the image as the work directory. Then we install a few dependencies with the APK package manager, including GCC. And then we copy the requirements file from the host inside the image and install it with the pip package manager. We then add a metadata specifying that this application will run on port 5000. Then we copy the rest of the files from the host machine inside the image. We then set two environment variables that is Flask specific and specify the default command to be used when a container is run, which is Flask run. Finally, we define a Docker Compose file, which is used for running Docker Compose. We specify the version and define two services, Redis and Web. The Redis service simply uses an image Redis Alpine from the Docker Hub registry. The web service does not specify an image, but it instead specifies a build context, which is the current directory. So this basically says to Docker, look for a Docker file in the current directory, which is this one. Then we specify the port. It says port 8000 on the host will be mapped to port 5000 inside the container, which is where Flask is running. And finally, we say that this web service will depend on Redis. So Docker knows to start Redis before starting web. All right. Step three is to run and test the application. Once we have defined these files, we can open up a terminal on this directory and simply run docker compose up. This will pull the prerequisite images, build the web image, and run the containers. All right. So once docker starts the containers, we should be able to reach the application. Since we had published the web service on port 8000 on the host, we can use curl on a separate terminal, localhost and port 8000 to reach the application. So it seems to work. It says, hello world, I have been seen one times. And every time we make a request, the count seems to increase. So our application is working as expected. Awesome. We can list the containers of the project with docker compose ps. So it shows us that Redis and Web are running and the ports they are using. One important thing to notice, docker compose up will by default attach to the terminal. So here we can see docker compose up is printing the logs and it is actually attached to the terminal. We can use control C to detach but this will stop the containers that are running. To run the services in the background and not attached to the terminal, we can simply use a hyphen D option. So as we can see, Docker Compose ES, our applications are running again. We can view the logs again with Docker Compose logs and the hyphen F option will follow the logs. We can see the logs again. Step four is to modify the application. Changes are inevitable. So let us make a change to our app. The web container is printing out a warning. Warning, this is a development server. Do not use this in production. Use a production WSGI server instead. 
So in production, we do not want to use the server we get with Flask Run. Instead, we want to use a production grid server like Gunicorn. So first we will add a dependency to our requirements file called Gunicorn. And then we will modify Docker file to instead of run Flask Run to run Gunicorn instead. We will remove the environment variables for Flask as they are not needed anymore. We will specify Gunicorn and additionally we will use the bind option to specify the address to bind to. So bind to all interfaces on the port 5000 and use the app file and the app module application named app. So app file and the application named app. We'll save this file. So once we save our changes, we have to build our images again. So let us run docker compose build. This will build the new changes. After building the new image, we want to restart the web service. So we will say docker compose up web. We will specify the hyphen D option to run in the background. No depths to not update the dependencies. And let's specify a timeout of one second. So our container has already been updated. We can reach localhost again. Our local host 8000. Our application seems to be working. But if we look at the logs now, we can see that instead of the previous logs, Gunicorn is now running and it is not printing any warning anymore. Nice. All right, the final step is to remove all the services. For that, all we need to do is to run docker compose down and our applications are already removed. If we had defined volumes in the services, like in the WordPress example, the volumes wouldn't be automatically removed with the docker compose down command. This is to avoid accidental deletion of data. To tear down everything including the volumes, we can specify a hyphen V option with the docker compose down command. Congratulations, you now know how to use docker compose. So when should we use Docker Compose? The first use case is for development environments. When developing software, the ability to run applications and their dependencies in isolated environments is crucial. For example, you might have a dependency on another team's application, which in turn might have its own set of complexities, like configuring the database in a particular way. By using Compose, you can run the whole stack or remove it with a single command. Automated testing environments. Automated workflows like CI-CD pipelines generally require tools to easily create and destroy environments. Containers are ideal for such environments due to their low resource footprint and speed. By using our configuration file, Compose provides a convenient way to create and destroy such environments for your test suite. Single host deployments. Although Compose was mainly created for development and testing workflows, it is sometimes used in production for running containers on a single host. While Compose is continuously improving, it is not a full-fledged container orchestrator like Swarm or Kubernetes. Check out the official documentation before using Compose in production. In this tutorial, we learned what Docker Compose is, why it exists, how to use it and when to use it. By specifying container configuration in a file, Compose simplifies running multi-container workloads on a single host. If you found this tutorial helpful, leaving a like, 
comment or subscribing will really help us out. Thanks for making it so far. We have a lot more exciting DevOps content on the way. So we hope you stay tuned. Till then, be bold and keep learning. But most importantly, take care.